So I've been bombarded with these ads of this new distortion plugin by Minimal Audio called Rift. I was super in awe of its dope user interface. And as some of you may know, I'm a sucker for distortion plugins, especially when it has a dope user interface. So I couldn't help myself but to buy it, although I shouldn't be buying any more plugins because I am saving for a new PC, but I did want to get it to try it out and then show you guys the results. Speaking of which, if you're looking into building your next music PC, make sure you check out my video with Tech Notice where we talk about what components to get for the best setup. By the way, my name is Stranger, and if you want to improve your music production and sound design, especially with drum and bass and dance music, then this channel is for you. This video is not sponsored by Minimal Audio. As I mentioned, I just had to get my hands on it, so I bought the plugin so I can test it out and then share you my thoughts on it, whether you should buy it or not. And as usual, if you want to see me make more videos like these, then make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you're a beginner to Ableton, then check out my four class series on Skillshare where I show you the basics on drum programming and writing bass lines. All right, without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so let's start with what I like about Minimal Audio's Rift. What's unique about Rift is you can apply a completely different distortion algorithm on the positive and negative polarity of the waveform. So they call it bipolar processing. And they also provide a nice selection of different distortion or wave shaping algorithms that sound really nice. So here's my sound without Rift. And now let's play with riff. I'm going to increase the drive as well. We can use these knobs to adjust the shape of the distortion algorithms. So that sounds great. As well, they have a stage section. So the more stages you increase, the more complex and rich the distortion will sound. So that sounds pretty nasty. Now let's just go through a number of the different wave shapes. So some really awesome and rich sounding distortion shapes. There's also a really good filter section with a great selection of different filters. So uh, you can apply this pre and post distortion. This morph knob is pretty useful. So it morphs the shape of the filter. So some pretty cool and wild results you can do playing with the filter. The feedback section is pretty neat as well. It allows you to create some delay as well as some flange or phaser sounding effects. Essentially what it's doing is it's sending back the distorted sound as feedback. So combine that with the filter, you can do some pretty wild stuff with it. The modulation section is also pretty intuitive. It pretty much works like any modern synthesizer like Serum where you pull the modulator into the parameter and then you increase the modulation amount. So they have an envelope follow, which follows the envelope or the shape of your sound. There is a typical LFO section and then there's a custom curve section where you can draw in your own shapes. One of the really cool functions I like about the LFO is that you can 
create some randomization. So if you increase this randomization knob, it randomizes the shape and allows for some really interesting and organic wobble sounds. So I'm just going to bring the elfo as a straight sign and then pull this little arrow over to the cutoff and then increase the modulation amount. Now we're just going to wobble as a normal sine wave first. Now that sounds pretty good, but watch as we increase the randomize parameter. Sounds a lot more wild, more random for more organic sound. Awesome for wobbles. By the way, we're hosting a new remix contest on my label featuring Flo Anastasia and Tier Cahoot's new track, Sending Signals. And here's some information about the competition courtesy of Flo Anastasia. Hey, I'm vocalist Flo Anastasia and I'm so excited to announce my first ever remix competition. I'd love to hear your creative spin on my track, Sending Signals, featuring my vocals and production by Tier Cahoot, recently released on Toronto label Deviant Audio. There will be three top winners and I want to give a massive thank you to our amazing prize sponsors IK Multimedia, Renegade Audio, Cable Guys, and Very High Energy Group. You'll also win your choice of Deviant Audio and Flow Anastasia merch. You can listen to the track and download the remix stems from my Audius profile. Once you're done, upload your track to Audius and be sure to select This Is A Remix. The deadline is August 4th and I'll be scoring the top 10 finalists with Deviant founder Stranger live on his YouTube channel. Your remix can be any genre, any style, and I'm so excited to hear what you create. All right, so we've talked about what I like about this plugin, and the only thing that I think is missing with Rift is a multi-band distortion option. So this plugin only allows distortion of the entire signal, whereas other modern distortion plugins such as Trash 2 or Thermal allows you to, to break down your signal into low, mid, and high bands and apply a different distortion to each band. So Rift is a little more of a different beast. It's more a unique thing is it's bipolar processing, which is really cool. And if you really need multiband distortion, there is a way around it. Just go into your workstation and break your signal manually into the high, mid, and low band. Now, depending on your audio workstation, the process of breaking up that band may be different. For example, if you're in Logic, you may have to send the signal into three different buses and add a different EQ on each bus. But with Ableton, you can simply apply an audio effects rack and then introduce a high, mid, and low band. So this section has a high EQ, high pass, mid band, and low band. And then I'm applying a different riff distortion on each band, except the low, I'm just keeping it pure for a nice pure sub bass. So here it is with the low band, I'll add the high and mids one at a time. So it's not the most convenient way to get multiband distortion. However, if you have the audio effect rack created and pre-saved, you can just pull it in and then add rift on each band and you have multiband distortion. As well, to make it easier, if you want access to my personal audio effect rack, then I'll leave it down in the links below. All right, let's have some fun distorting some jump up drum and bass sound. So I'm gonna start with the raw sound and then dial some rift in. All right, so some pretty fun options you can have with this plugin. All right, so on to the million dollar question. Should you buy Rift? 
Well, if you don't have a distortion plugin, currently it is on sale for early adopters at 75 US dollars. So you save $50 and the price point is lower than thermal as well as trash too. So it's a pretty good value. However, if you want more flexibility and creative control on how you implement the distortion from multiband distortion and dynamics, as well as how you route it, then maybe something like Trash 2 makes more sense because it has a lot more different options on how you configure the distortion plugin. Not to mention it has two stages of distortion as well as a dynamics section which are all available in multiband and single band mode. Also thermal has been a favorite of mine recently. It has a really good interface and has a lot of flexibility on how you control the distortion as well. as well as a good number of distortion shapes and multiband mode. However, thermal is a lot more expensive, so you do have to dish it out if you want it. That said, if you want something brand new that's cutting edge, Rift is a great choice. The bipolar processing is pretty cool. It has awesome distortion shapes, as well as its filter section, feedback section, as well as the modulation matrix make it a pretty neat plugin. The only limitation is that it doesn't have a multiband mode. But as I mentioned earlier, there is a workaround. You can manually create a multiband section using different bus or an audio effect rack in Ableton. So not all is lost without multiband mode. And once again, it is a really good price. So it is something to consider. All right, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for watching, keep practicing, and I'll see you at the next video. Hey, if you want to support me, you can grab a number of my products. I have a gnarly serum preset pack with over 150 face melting base presets. As well, I have some Ableton project files to jumpstart your next idea. But if you're not ready yet, you can pick up my free serum preset pack and my free sample pack. For more information, check the links down below.